The US Navy has, since the Second World War, been clearly the most powerful maritime force in the world. Now built around nuclear powered aircraft carriers, large numbers of very capable area air defence ships, significant and comprehensive amphibious warfare capabilities, and the largest number of nuclear powered attack submarines, no country can match all of this capability. Recently, the PLAN, or the Chinese Navy, has surpassed it in terms of numbers of ships, but not by tonnage. How powerful would the US Navy be on the eve of 2028, just four years away? G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, US Navy of 2028, how many warships, which types? This briefing will assess the likely totals of vessels commissioned and in service ready for operations by 1 January 2028. I'll begin with the service combatants, then cover amphibious vessels, and finally submarines. I've organised this information so we can make an apples versus apples comparison with an earlier briefing that I've done on the PLAN of 2028. See link below. I won't be covering aircraft in this briefing. The most prominent images of the US Navy are those of nuclear powered supercarriers, which began with the Nimitz class and which are further divided into the Theodore Roosevelt and Ronald Reagan subclasses. In service since 1975, the Nimitz class carriers were designed with larger stores of aviation fuel and larger magazines compared to previous carriers. The current backbone of the force, they are slowly being replaced by the Gerillard Ford class. The most significant of new additions to the US Navy's service force are the Gerillard Ford class of supercarriers, the first of which was commissioned in 2017. The Ford improves on the Nimitz class in a number of ways, including the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, the emails, and advanced arresting gear. It should be noted that the first of the class has had numerous teething problems delaying its effective combat employment. These carriers will remain under construction for many years, with the second to commission in 2025. Supporting the aircraft carriers are the large surface combatants. The largest of these that will be in service in 2028 will be the Zomok class. Classified as destroyers by the US Navy, but cruisers in size, these ships have a focus on stealth and now surface warfare. The ships have a distinctive tumble home hull form, a design in which the hull slopes inward from above the waterline, significantly reducing the radar cost section. Uh, they also feature all electric propulsion. They are equipped with 80 VLS cells, which are different from the standard uh, US VLS cells. The Mark 57 is an evolution of the Mark 41 VLS being wider, thus allowing for slightly larger missiles with uh, significantly increased propulsion and or payloads. Originally designed with two 155mm guns, uh, these are being removed as they have not been a success. It also carries two anti-submarine warfare helicopters or vertical takeoff UAVs. The Zomwaltz may in the future also have a ballistic missile defence role. Uh, no more will be produced. The other component of the large service combatant force are the Ali Burke class destroyers. While multi-mission ships, they are primary air warfare vessels of any of the carrier strike groups or surface action groups. This class comprises a number of variants or flights. Uh, these begin with the Flight 1 and 2 vessels, which are equipped with 90 VLS cells, two slant-launched Harpoon anti-ship missile canisters, a 5-inch gun, two close-in weapon systems, two triple lightweight torpedo tubes, but no helicopters. Uh, these ships are no longer in production. The later Burks include the Flight 2 Alphas, Technology Insertion, Restart and Flight 3 variants. These are equipped with 96 VLS cells, a 5-inch gun, a close-in weapon system, a CRAM point defence missile system, two triple lightweight torpedo tubes, and two anti-submarine warfare helicopters. Now, these ships have also evolved into mobile 
anti-ballistic missile and anti-satellite platforms. These will remain in production for some time. Supplementing the large surface combatants are the small surface combatants, which will eventually consist solely of frigates. The US Navy is reintroducing frigates, not seen since the retirement of the Oliver Hazard Perry class, now in the form of the Constellation class. These are based on the European multi-purpose frigate, the Frems. The US Navy wanted a, a vessel cheaper than the Burke class, yet still very combat capable and able to keep up with the aircraft carriers and with sensors networked to the rest of the fleet. They will be equipped with uh, 32 VLS cells, 16 slant launched anti-ship missiles, a 21 cell rolling airframe point defense missile system, a 57 millimeter gun, one anti-submarine warfare helicopter and one vertical takeoff UAV and MQ-8 fire scout. Their production has just started. Also part of the small surface combatant force are the littoral combat ships comprising two classes, the Freedom and Independence classes. Designed for operations near shore, they are small, stealthy, agile, fast and manoeuvrable surface combatants. Standard armament includes a 57mm gun. Now, these vessels have not been a success and are being replaced by the Constellation class. Supporting the surface action fleet are the underway replenishment ships, the AORs. Now, these ships provide underway replenishment of fuel and dry cargo to carrier strike groups, amphibious ready groups and other surface forces to allow them to operate worldwide. The bulk of these ships are the Henry J. Kaiser and John Lewis classes. The Kaisers entered service in 1986 and are being replaced by the Lewis class starting from 2021. Both are capable of making around 20 knots. The most capable of the AORs are the supply class. These fast, underway replenishment ships are the only US Navy resupply ships able to keep up with the carrier strike groups, as they can make 25 knots. The supply class ships are built to military combat standards and are shock hardened. Moving to amphibious assault ships, the US Navy has the most capable fleet of large and small amphibious vessels in the world. The largest of these vessels currently in service are the WASP and America classes. Capable of launching landing craft air cushioned LCACs, helicopters and tilt rotor aircraft, as well as providing air support via F-35B strike fighters, these vessels are the most capable amphibious assault vessels in the world. The America class landing helicopter assault, LHAs, are the largest, latest and most modern amphibious assault ship of the US Navy. The first of these ships was commissioned in 2014. Although they only carry helicopters and stovile aircraft, the America class, with a displacement of about 46,000 tonnes, are similar in size to the French Charles de Gaulle class and the Indian Vikramaditya fixed-wing aircraft carriers. The Flight Zero ships of the America class, America and Tripoli, do not have well decks. Instead, they have more room for aircraft, their spares and weapons, and fuel. As such, the America class can be used as small aircraft carriers with a squadron of F-35Bs plus several multi-purpose helicopters such as the MH-60 Seahawks. From the third ship on, the Flight 1s, they will have smaller aircraft hangars to leave room for the return of a well deck. Supporting these are the landing pad docks, the LPDs. Again, capable of launching both LCACs, helicopters and tilt rotor aircraft, they represent both a significant augmentation to the WASP and America class ships and an independent amphibious capability in their own right. The San Antonio class are the latest iteration, having replaced the Whidbey Island class and eventually the Harpers Ferry class of modified Whidbey Island LPDs. Supplementing the Larger uh, assault ships are other smaller amphibious vessels. These include the Spearhead class Expeditionary Fast Transports, the EPF, a high speed shallow draft vessel intended for rapid intra theatre transport of medium sized cargo loads. 
The EPFs can reach speeds of up to 45 knots and allow the rapid transit and deployment of forces, equipment and supplies of up to 550 tonnes. The EPF has a flight deck for helicopters and a load ramp that allows vehicles to quickly drive on and off the ship, including at undeveloped wharf facilities. Adding to this ocean-going amphibious capability will be a new, and as yet unspecified, LSM or landing ship medium. Likely with a length of about 100 metres or somewhere between 200 and 400 feet and a payload of around 600 tonnes. Although they do not provide the floodable well deck or helicopter facilities that the large amphibious assault ships have, they provide significant lift capacity, especially where the assault area is suitable for the ship to beach. Finally, moving to submarines, the US Navy has the world's most powerful submarine launched nuclear deterrent capability. Currently based around the higher class SSBNs, are equipped with 20 Trident submarine launched ballistic missiles, reduced from the 24 they were initially able to carry due to the new START agreement. The Ohio class includes the Navy's 14 ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs, and four modified as cruise missile submarines, SSGNs. The Ohio class are the largest submarines ever built by the US Navy. The Ohio class replacement is the Columbia class, of which there will eventually be 12, with the first twin to service in 2031. They will be armed with 16 Trident SLBMs. In terms of SSNs, or nuclear powered attack submarines, the US continues to possess the largest and most capable fleet. The oldest of the SSNs are the Los Angeles or the 688 class, development of which commenced in 1967 with major improvements over previous boats in stealth and speed so that they could keep up with the carrier battle groups. Initially, these were to be replaced by the Seawolf class, which were designed to combat the threat of advanced Soviet ballistic missile submarines. The Seawolf class are larger, faster and significantly quieter than the previous Los Angeles class and also carry more weapons. One of the class, the USS Jimmy Carter, is roughly 100 feet or 30 metres longer than the other two boats due to the insertion of a multi-mission platform which allows the launch and recovery of remotely operated underwater vehicles and Navy SEAL teams. The replacement of the 688s are uh, the Virginia class, capable of a broad spectrum of open ocean and littoral missions, including anti-submarine warfare and intelligence gathering operations. The Virginia class was intended, in part, as a less expensive alternative to the Seawolf class. The Block 5 variant, built from 2022 onwards, will have an additional Virginia payload module midsection, increasing their overall length and displacement. With this, the Block 5s will be able to carry an additional 28 Tomahawk cruise missiles. So, the US fleet in 2028 might look as follows. 11 aircraft carriers, 9 of the Nimitz and 2 of the new Gerald R. Ford. 85 destroyers or large service combatants, as all the cruisers should be retired by then, including the three Zolmolts and a total of 82 Burks across the various flights. These will be supplemented by around 24 of the small service combatants comprising one or two of the Constellation frigates and at least 22 of the LCS. An amphibious force comprising 29 large vessels, including seven WASP LHDs and four America LHAs, together with the San Antonio class landing pad docks, LPDs, which have replaced the Woodby Island class. And while these will eventually total 26, it is likely only 14 will be in service by 1 January 2028. These will be joined by the four Harpers Ferry class LPDs, which are likely will still be needed in service to achieve the Navy's target of 29. Smaller amphibious vessels will include 16 of the Spearhead Expeditionary Fast Transports, the EPFs, and likely at least two of the new LSMs or landing ship mediums. 
The underway replenishment ships will likely consist of two of the supply class fast AORs, with the possibility the other two could be brought back into service from reserve. Possibly still around seven of the Henry J. Kaiser class that are to eventually be replaced by the John Lewis class, which by 2028 might total nine ships. And a fully nuclear-powered submarine force, including 13 Ohio-class SSBNs and 47 SSNs, comprising 34 Virginias, three Seawolves, and likely still around 10 of the 688s. Uh, the four Ohio SSGNs are likely to have been decommissioned before 2028. Uh, in addition to these, there are also mine countermeasure, pre-positioning, and medical vessels, amongst others. In summary, the US Navy will remain the most powerful naval force in the world for some time, regardless of its shipbuilding program over the next four years. Over this period, the overall capability and size of the fleet will not substantively change. But this force is distributed over the entire globe. How this force might fare against a peer or near peer naval force in the near future, a force that can concentrate effort, and something the US hasn't faced since the Second World War remains to be seen. That concludes today's briefing. Please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cero.